Hey everyone, this is Kevin from Kevin's Micro Fleet. Today I'm coming to you with another Micro Galaxy Squadron review. We're going to take a look today at the Target exclusive Destroy the Death Star Battle Pack. So this is actually a huge set. Uh, we get a bunch of different things in here. So we're going to take a look at the figures. We'll take a look at the vehicle, all of the accessories that come along with this. This is a Target exclusive right now. It can be found at Targets in US. It also has been found internationally in Canada at Toys R Us. And I'm sure it's going to be other places as well. So let's go ahead and break this thing out of the box and dive into the review. So let's go ahead and start here with the packaging. Uh, this box is massive because it does come with a decent amount in it. So you get the Falcon, you get the two interceptors, and you get the figures and the accessories. So starting here with the box, um, you've got uh, here on the bottom, it says the Destroy the Death Star. It's got the number on there, 114. It's got the picture of the vehicle as well as the interceptors on it. Turn it to the side, we get some box art here on the side with the Death Star 2 as well as a B-Wing in there, which will be coming here soon. We get some damage here on the Falcon as well. As we turn it around here to the back, you get a chance to see all of the different pieces to it. So you get your little cutouts here, and then as we kind of move across here, you get the Falcon as well as all of the different features that it has with the lights and sound. And then you do get your interceptors here as well, which are the first interceptors that we're actually getting beyond the San Diego Comic-Con exclusives. And then we turn here and then you, this shows you again, lights and sounds for the Falcon. So on the inside, there is a gigantic cutout here, uh, this little cardboard backing, which is very nice. You got a few X-Wings in there. They all look to be the same X-Wing render it uh, looks like maybe this one here is red three, this is five, this is five as well. And you get some TIE Fighters interceptors over top of, uh, I'm guessing, uh, Endor. So now if we go ahead and start with the accessories. So um, what this comes with is this uh, plastic sheet here that is um, taped to the back of the blister packets on the inside. And then this has the instructions here for everything that this guy does. So as we go ahead and open this up so you can see it, here's what this looks like. So it shows you all the figures. You do get the two stands. The stands are actually hidden underneath the Falcon inside the packaging. You get a couple radar dishes, all the accessories. You get all the stuff down here. Take some AAA batteries. Turn it over here and you get all of the lights and sounds and there's the accelerometer in it and all that jazz, which we'll go through. So let's start with the accessories. So this does come with the same uh, ventral gun that we're gonna get with the other Falcons. You know, it's got the little four things on there. It's got the little peg hole to be able to fit inside, which we'll do that here in a minute. And it does come with two different radar dishes. So this is supposed to be the destroy the Death Star Falcon, the one that's actually flying through the Death Star 2. So you get the two different uh, parts here. You get one that has just the complete radar dish as well as the one that has the broken radar dish. Now in the actual movie, when the Falcon actually hits the top part of that uh, thing that they're flying through, the entire dish gets broken off and there's nothing there. So they made a decision here to uh, include a piece of a radar dish so that it actually looks a little bit cooler because uh, otherwise it would just be nothing on there. So those are your two accessories and then you get your figure pack here. So the figure pack is pretty sweet. This is our first chance of getting all of these figures actually and the TIE Fighter pilots with their extra deco. So you get Lando, Nine Nub, you get a couple Endor Troopers and then you get your TIE Pilots. So let's go ahead and break these out and take a look at them. The, um, we'll start here with Lando. So here is what Lando looks like. Did a very good job here with the sculpt, just looking at this for the first time. Oh, we got a little bit of his hair paint there on the side of his face. Um, really nice here on the back. 
they did a great job. I mean, they continue to do a really good job here with um, with these figures and getting some of the paint application on some of the very small parts, like right there on his jacket. Um, you know, the whatever that is there, that little patch. But he bends at the has two points of articulation, so that is uh, your your Lando, which he looks okay. I would say beyond that little mess up on the side of his face. Then we've got Nine Nub here. Um, again, uh, I would say very nice sculpt here on the figure. Paint looks like it ran just a little bit on his head overall. He still looks really nice. So now we get a chance to see the Endor Troopers. So this is the first Endor Trooper that we're getting beyond Luke and Leia. And so here he is with his green outfit. He's got the helmet on like they have, a little more of a glossy look. There's really no uh, camo look to him. Uh, the one thing I did want to do is just do a quick comparison to the Action Fleet version. The Action Fleet version does have, you know, obviously an action pose. He's holding a gun. His knees are bent. And a little more detail on the Action Fleet figure actually beyond what we're getting with the Micro Galaxy one, which is really one of the first figures I would say where we're getting all of that extra detail in Action Fleet versus this. But overall, it looks okay. Here is another one of our figures. So just a side-by-side -side comparison here for these guys. They are the same, no difference. No difference at all. So here now we get a chance to look at the TIE Pilots. And the one great thing about these TIE Pilots is the fact that we actually do get a chance to get the Imperial Cog on their helmet. So uh, this one right here actually looks pretty good. The cogs are placed correctly. This one here, you can see that this one Imperial Cog is actually misprinted. It looks like it's coming down over his eye. So they did a great job on the one side, but they missed it on the other side. Um, overall, though, I would say the TIE Pilots look great. The sculpt on it is really nice. Adding the Imperial Cog definitely does make a difference versus just having a silver blob on there. All of the figures are one inch tall, so no real need to measure them. They're the same as what you get with all of the other ones. So now I want to take a look at the TIE Interceptors first. So we'll go ahead and move the Falcon out of the way. We'll come back to him here in a minute. With the TIE Interceptors, these are the first Interceptors that we're actually getting from the Micro Galaxy Squadron line. And the great thing about this is they do come with stands. So uh, we'll take a look at that stand, the stand first. They did a clever job here with this stand to make it where you don't have to put a hole inside the vehicle like we have with the Action Fleet version. And so you can see there's a little uh, kind of like ridge in there and the wings just kind of sit right down inside of it, which helps to hold it upright which is a very clever idea. I like that. I think that's really cool. You do get Star Wars logo on there. You get some other little tiny details on it as well. But overall, great stand. The stands are the same for both of the Interceptors. Now, these are considered the battle damage Interceptors. And you can see that mainly through the deco. So uh, we'll take a look at that here comparing the two together. So you got a difference there in the uh, the top of the cockpit where there is some more damage with this one versus the other. As we turn to the side to be able to see this, you can see again just a difference in that paint application. Turning it around from the rear, everything looks the same pretty much. Take a look at the underside of it. Underside looks about the same. And then now if we look at the other wing on the other side, uh, it is, they're both clean looking, no damage at all. Now, um, instead of looking at both of these interceptors, we're just gonna go ahead and take a look at one to look through all of the different features to it, because there's quite a bit to this. 
So I really like that they did, again, um, they painted the cockpit and they made this um, uh, plastic there window tinted slightly. When you open the cockpit, the cockpit window is transparent. Also same, kind of tinted a little bit. As you turn this around, this piece here on the back does come down. And I really like that they made that, uh, this right here, um, you know, negative space to where you then would see the engine. So in the original TIE Fighter, this is just kind of blue and it's painted on there and there is no hole in the back for the engine. It just opens up and there's nothing behind it. So they added in the little red engine detail there, which is really nice as well. And then on the underside, you have the little push button to be able to eject the pilot. Now on these interceptors, the wings do come off, but there is one thing that is very important to know about the wings. So as I go ahead and pull this guy off of here, um, where we originally with the standard TIE fighter had uh, like a D ring was essentially the, um, the part that would put the wing on. You can see now that there is actually like a notch in there. So unfortunately, the wings are not interchangeable. So you couldn't take this cockpit and be able to put it onto the TIE Fighter or vice versa, take the TIE Fighter wing and put it on here because they don't have the same um, uh, male-female connections there to be able to put them on. Both sides do come off on this. Uh, it is a very tight fit, which I'm happy that they did that so that they don't just fall off randomly. The other thing that's really nice about this interceptor is the size of the cockpit. The size of the cockpit is just a little bit bigger, which I'll show a comparison here in a minute, but I want to just finish rolling through this first. Um, I really like this. The little guns here that stick off of the end is a nice added feature relative to what we would get with some of the other interceptors, especially the Action Fleet one back there where you don't actually see the gun sticking out of it. Um, but uh, I, I really like this. I think this one looks great. So let's go ahead and do some measurements here. And then once we do the measurements, then I'll go ahead and compare this. So from front to back here, from the uh, from really the top of that gun to the back of it is five inches. Side to side is three and a half inches, and the height is about three and a quarter inches. So let me grab the Tie Fighter, and then we'll go ahead and compare. Okay, so now we've got the other Tie Fighters out here, and we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at them. So here is your Tie Interceptor. And here is your Series 1 TIE Fighter. So you can see the cockpit difference there is pretty pretty significant. I mean, the TIE Interceptor cockpit looks way bigger than the uh, regular TIE Fighter cockpit. So let me go ahead and pop these wings off on the TIE Fighter. And the, the uh, TIE Fighter from Series 1 also is much flimsier than uh, what we're getting out of the Interceptor. The Interceptor definitely has um, is a much firmer fit together and the wings are firmer as well. So here's a chance to see the cockpits, you know, basically right on top of one another. Flip it around this way so you can see. Um, now, when you go inside the cockpit of the regular of the Series 1 TIE Fighter as well, the, uh, the fit in there is really small. I mean, you can see the the cockpit is tiny. When you put the figure inside of it also, it's kind of hard to close the top if you don't have them sitting in there just perfect. On the inside of the interceptor, the interior is obviously bigger because the whole cockpit is bigger. You can see that in here there is that little tiny clip down there to be able to clip the figure's legs into so that, that way they don't bounce around on the inside of the, um, of the vehicle. Now, if we look at this one compared to the first order TIE Fighter, the first order TIE Fighter, the cockpit is, you know, much bigger than the Series 1. It's still not quite the size of the Interceptor. Um, so that is that compared. 
So just uh, to do a quick measurement here of the interceptor cockpit, it's about an inch and a quarter maybe, an inch and a quarter tall. And so again, like you can see in the comparison with the Micro Galaxy Series 1 TIE Fighter, this one is definitely a bit bigger. So now let's go ahead and compare this bad boy to um, the old Action Fleet. And so you'll see with the Action Fleet version, obviously a much different color. So the Action Fleet version is blue versus here is the Micro Galaxy Squadron version. So you can see there the size, the Action Fleet one is definitely bigger. Uh, again, the cockpit is much bigger. And you can see the struts there that kind of run through the middle also are a lot bigger. Here's what it looks from a side to side perspective. The wings on the Interceptor, the Micro Galaxy one, are longer and it does have the guns that stick out at the end versus the Action Fleet that doesn't. The Action Fleet does have one cool feature. It's never actually in the movies, but the wings do open like the head, which is pretty cool. So that is that on the Interceptor. It's quite a bit of stuff going on there. Again, this is the first Interceptors that we're getting beyond the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, the Storyboard Series exclusive. We will be getting another version of this that is not the battle damage version, which will be part of the light armor class for series four, as well as the rare version, which will be the Royal TIE Interceptor, a red version of it. That so way. now we have the, the destroy the Death Star battle pack Falcon here compared to the original Falcon, as well as the Batu Falcon. So if we're looking at this first, uh, I went ahead and already plugged in the uh, radar dish here, the broken radar dish, which you can actually see. This thing will actually articulate turn side to side. I also went ahead and put the ventral gun on here as well. This guy will turn as well, which we'll take a look at. And then you have the cockpit here that opens also. So let's start there. So the cockpit does open and in the interior here, you can actually see that it's got the clips here for the figures which is different than what came in the original Falcon. You'll see that as I go ahead and do the comparison, but this is great to be able to put the figures in here and be able to fly this thing around without having them bounce all over the place. Then as we go ahead and turn to the underside, we do have the landing gear, your standard landing gear. Um, these uh, back two move together. This one up here is independent, but they do fold up inside of the actual Falcon to give like a nice little panel there on the bottom to make sure, make it look like there isn't landing gear there, which is nice. So as we come around here to the ventral gun, you can actually see if I turn this around here, there is a little notch to be able to pull this piece out. So you can see with that piece out there, there are some little pieces inside of that chair to be able to hold the figure in place, which is a great addition relative to what's in the other Falcon that does not have that in there. And so the figure just bounces around inside quite a bit. And then if we go ahead and open this thing up, so if you open it up, there are two clips that are right in here on the back side of the, uh, this panel here. So if you pull up right in the middle, that will go ahead and pop it loose. And then you now have the interior. So I went ahead and put the other radar dish inside here so you can see that. And then underneath here, we have this little panel that you can end up putting, uh, that can end up coming out. So it is nice they added this little um, uh, latch or this little piece here so that you can go ahead and pull this up a little easier than the way they had it before. You also have the ramp right here that goes down. So if you go ahead and pop that thing out, uh, you can see that it doesn't go down very far. It doesn't actually hold in place very well. You can't fit a figure in it, but um, that is that. And then you've got this painted section up here of the engine, which is slightly different than what we get with the standard version as well. Now, from a feature perspective, in terms of all of the uh, features from the accelerometer, you do have the two little buttons there. So let me go ahead and put this guy back together. Uh, this does have lights on it, just like the other Falcon does as well. So you have your two buttons. This one here will activate it. And then as you move this, at the different angles, it will actually make different sounds. There is the firing cannon. 
And then if you activate this four times in a row, you'll actually get a false start sound. So the problem is if you push it right now, it goes ahead and turns it off. So you do need to do it while it's still going. Let's we'll see if we can get this to work. There's three. So we should get a false start here in a second. Okay, one more. And a false start. So a pretty cool feature that they have in this Falcon. Um, and they have that in all of them as well. Go ahead and turn that off so it doesn't make any more noise. So that is your lights and sounds on that. Um, now, if we're looking at this from a deco perspective, you can obviously see the, the difference in the damage in the deco. And then now if we're looking at this relative to your standard Falcon, you can obviously see the difference in the amount of uh, engine exhaust that there is, as well as the scratches that are all over the hull. The wash is basically the same. All of the red paneling that's on there is the exact same. There is no difference. If we're looking at the underside of the Falcon, the underside is the exact same. There is no difference. And then again, if you were to look at the difference in the cockpit, so here is the standard Falcon. You can see there are the no clips there. And then with the ventral gun, when we go ahead and open this guy up, get a chance to look inside, you can see there's no extra clips there in the seat to hold the figure in place. Also, on the interior, interior of this, you can see that this part is not painted. And that little clip thing is different. So when we move over to the Batu Falcon, uh, one of the biggest differences here is the color of the wash. So this does have a bluish colored wash versus the dark wash, which you're getting on the destroyed, the Death Star Falcon. And all of the red paneling, again, is the same. It comes with different figures. There are some other little minor features that are different here with the Batu Falcon, as well as the radar dish is rectangular versus it not being rectangular. So from a measurement perspective, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So to measure this thing from front to back, we're looking at roughly 10 inches or so. Side to side is about seven and a half inches. And then top to bottom, you know, from the top of the gun there is probably about two and a half inches. Now, if we look at this one compared to the Action Fleet Falcon as well, we'll see quite a bit of difference there. And here is the Action Fleet Falcon. So, I mean, a massive difference here in the size. The Action Fleet version obviously was designed to fit in a much smaller package. It's not really designed to be in scale with the other vehicles. Um, and so you, you don't really get that. There are also a lot less features in this Falcon, obviously because it's much smaller with the Action Fleet one. So that is your review of the Destroy the Death Star Battle Pack. If you liked this review, please go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. Also, feel free to check out any of the Amazon links that are below. That will actually uh, be all related to Micro Galaxy Squadron toys that you can get off of Amazon. And there is a Facebook group there that you can go ahead and uh, join up to. It's a group I run with some friends from all over the world. We love Micro Galaxy Squadron and any other Star Wars micro toys. Thanks for tuning in and look forward to seeing you on the next review.